All right, guys. Uh, so, like I said, uh, my agenda here is uh, going to be just an intro to me, and then sort of my history with different uh, markets that I trade, how I trade, what I trade, what systems I use, and then uh, we'll leave it for an open floor for any questions for what uh, what you guys have. So, my name's Jesse. I uh, I've been trading for a few years now. Just made the switch to full time trading. So, um, just this year. So, this is my full time income. Um, if I lose money in on a day, I uh, don't get paid that day. So um, everybody, everybody who's in these servers generally wants to make this uh, at least some side cash. And uh, when you lose money, you don't get that. So um, sort of some some um, pros and cons to doing it full time there. But um, so I've been trading forex. I am fully funded on forex through my forex funds. Um, and working on FTMO right now. If you guys don't know what funded traders are, um, basically it's, you do, um, they call it challenges, two steps of it, and uh, if you can follow their rules and make enough money without losing an, uh, a certain amount, they will fund you um, to a certain amount of money. So, uh, for example, it cost me 500 bucks to start a $100,000 account challenge. If I fail, I lost that money. I didn't fail. I passed. So now I have uh, access to $100,000 of equity to trade on Forex. Um, so I'm not like uh, other people on here who, um, you know, can't back up what they're saying. I do this full time. I uh, um, am fully funded, which less than 0.6% uh, of people can say. So um, that's kind of my credentials. Um, but with that said, I never look down on anybody asking me questions. I recently just started doing the alert stuff on Discord. Um, my alerts are never, you know, everybody always gives the disclaimer. They're never, um, you know, financial advice. But mine are really never financial advice. The only reason I, I still stay in these servers are because uh, other analysts just give me more eyes on, on different tickers that I'm not looking at. You know, a, as you can see on my screen, I have different watch lists, like my go-to options. I'll just filter through these, but they're like I would have never played AMC the past couple of days uh, if other analysts didn't watch it. So while you're looking on, okay, yep, I'll start streaming here in a second. Oh, Trey, uh, let me do that actually. Thanks for letting me know. Um, should be good there. You should see trading view. Let me know if that's not the case. Looks to be trading view in my screen. Um, but anyway, so I, I go through these watch lists and, um, you know, other analysts, um, you kind of want to filter through their play style. So um, some analysts will, you know, hold for uh, bag hold and 50% and, uh, plus or minus. I'm not generally that type. Uh, I keep my losers small and I let my winners run, which is really the recipe for success for trading. Um, so real quick, I will uh, I'll send this over. Um, this is my trade tracker. Oh, it's not going to show because I'm not sharing my screen. Change windows, screens, screen two. Okay, so this is my trade tracker. I don't send this out because trade trackers generally. Um, don't really show the trader as a whole because I can have an amazing trade tracker um, and honestly mine's pretty pretty good across you know nearly 750 trades at an 82 percent win rate um, not a lot of analysts can show you a trade tracker with that many trades accurately and you can go back through all of these dates and find you know certain price points and you know obviously there's no benefit to me um, faking that, but um, the my biggest piece with trading is risk management, and so that'll be kind of the basis of my trade strategy, which we'll go over here in a second. Um, but but pretty much the thesis is that you know even with an 82% win rate, you know if I'm winning uh, or or an options 91%, if I'm winning 91 trades, but my nine winners lose more money than my or my nine losers lose more money than my 91 winners, then I'm I'm not able to do this thing as a living. Um, so 
we'll we'll circle around to risk management but that's kind of my um, history and and credentials to show you I actually started in discord just like a lot of you guys um, and and these communities like Cree's are uh, fantastic communities to learn and if you can find the right people where you can ask a ton of questions that's how I learn so um, if you guys have any questions at all definitely uh, ping me in any of these chats and uh, I'll get a notification and respond to those as soon as I can as long as I'm uh, obviously at my computer and uh, not in a trade so that's uh, my introduction so we'll uh, Cree asked me to go over my my trading strategy so as you can see in um, in trading view I have no shortage of strategies right but with that said I I've been doing this a long time and I know different strategies so for example I can switch over to a 4 EMA um, let me make this one the main screen I can do a 4 EMA you know I'm sure some of you guys have something that looks like this I can switch over to a momentum one uh, you know all these different trading strategies but the best trading strategy that you can get is just simply price action so I like to trade based on uh, price action alone and then I use indicators as confluence not the other way around every indicator that anybody ever uses lags um, except for if it's Fibonacci retracements um, which really isn't an indicator it's a tool but if you have like auto Fibonacci retracements those don't lag but EMAs lag um, and obviously support and resistance doesn't lag but most indicators even VWAP lags um, so the only way for you to really get into trades quickly and, and snipe the bottom um, is to play price action so uh, if you guys don't know uh, I like to play based on what's called the strat uh, it's invented by Rob Smith. It's been used uh, by professional traders and vetted by professional traders um, for for pretty much as long as I've been alive. Um, so there's different strategies, and and when you understand candlesticks, not just you know that this kind of looks like a hammer and okay, there's a doji stuff like that. But when you really understand what the candlestick is telling you, that's when you'll be able to have your edge on the market. Um, another big thing that you guys need to realize is that our market is uh, the majority uh, institutionally driven so you need to find out where price is moving and why not just because you know I drew this line it, it should go back to this line you need to find out why so for example supply and demand zones um, those are respected because they're what's called an order block so if I look back on a chart, and, and I won't look back on a one minute, but uh, if I look back on a chart, right, this right here would be pretty much your supply and demand zone that most people would draw, but most people don't understand why it's a supply and demand zone. So these are just sitting orders. If you know how to read, it's called reading the tape, you'll see that when price comes down to here, there will just be sitting orders, large orders, just waiting at a at a limit fill to push the price up. People are are setting these orders all the way up here. When they're up in this zone, they're setting these orders uh, to buy here because they think this is the value, right? We obviously don't want to buy the top; we want to buy the bottom, um, and uh, unless you're shorting, obviously. But so they're setting limit orders here. So there's so many limit orders here that the sellers who are trying to push price down further can't get through. Um, so that's, that's the, the psychology behind why, why price is going there and why it didn't push through. So now when I'm looking at a chart like AMD has been, you know, a couple of you have, have even played my AMD uh, swing play here. So we're never really trying to be the first ones in or the first ones out. Uh, we we always want to be right in the middle and just ride the wave. So, you know, when I played that AMD call, it was around here, or I'm not sure which one I alerted in here, or around here, which I saw as supply and demand zones. So again, there's no indicators on this chart. You know, there there's the strat, but I could go down to just no indicators at all, 
and it would show you just the same. Um, so supply and demand zones. So I saw that it was coming back and we got in here, right? Or, or we got in here one or the other. Um, and so because I knew that there's so many sitting orders, I want to get everything that I'm buying in at a discount. And so that's just one of my several strategies. Um, I would say most of the time I'm trading based off of the strap. Um, if you guys don't know what that is, I would highly recommend looking into it. Um, as I said, it's, um, it's not necessarily a system that you trade all by itself. Um, but when you use it in conjunction with other indicators um, or, or a price bias, it's uh, a very powerful system. Um, so that's pretty much my one of my, my many um, systems here. And then, like I said, and you guys can screenshot this if you want. I'll leave it up for a few seconds. But this is all of my systems that I use and so if I'm looking at a certain bias I'll filter through timelines and filter through systems and because I know how to play based on Bollinger Bands uh, you know ADX's uh, EMA support and resistance because I know how to play on all of these I can look at confluence and have multiple system confluences um, and so yeah that's pretty much the gist of um, my system it's it's not super you know, in depth, but at the same time, it is really in depth because I use so many systems. But when I'm just filtering through stocks, this is generally what I have. Um, I have the Strat, which uses previous three hour high low, one day high low, one week high low, one month high low. And then uh, I, I play based on those and then based on candlestick patterns as well. Um, so that's pretty much my system. And then uh, I said I would tell you guys what I, what I trade normally. So my trade day usually starts, you know, if I'm not feeling lazy that day, I uh, usually starts at about 8 a.m. when the Forex U.S. stock market, or U.S., sorry, the U.S. Forex market opens. And uh, I'll go to Forex, and I generally only trade the majors, um, which I think Cree was trying to bring on some Forex into the server here too. Um, but I generally only trade the majors because there's always something to be played. Um, so I'll just filter through, you know, all the USD pairs, which are all the majors. So GBP, USD, Euro. Um, and if you guys don't know what Forex is, we can, uh, you can definitely shoot me a DM and, and I can help you out. Um, Forex does have kind of a negative connotation to it because there's so many people. It, it's the largest market in the world by far. Um, the U.S. stock market has several hundred billion dollars, or sorry, billion shares uh, traded each day and the forex market has over 6.6 .6 trillion uh, in terms of volume traded and so obviously the forex market is you know 10 plus times bigger than the uh, than any market in the world um, and with that being said it can be traded from anywhere in the world and a lot of people because it's so popular will just sell courses and uh, they're actually really awful traders themselves um, and so I don't sell any courses at all. I, I love to teach. I love to help people get to where I've been, you know, fortunate fortunate enough to get to. Um, so if you ever need anything with Forex, I never charge money for DMs um, or, or not even just Forex, anything with options. I never charge anything uh, to answer your questions. You know, I've, I was in anybody's shoes. Um, I don't think I've made it in trading, but um, I'm able to do this full time. So I... Uh, I am pretty confident in my abilities, but with that said, uh, we can open it up to any Q and A if any of you guys have anything. And uh, I told Korea I could be here till 5:30 or 6, so uh, even if not, if you guys have anything over the next couple minutes, um, you can let me know. But if you have anything, let me know. Bro, I definitely need to uh, look more into supply and demand zones. You were explaining that to that. To, mm -hmm. that to me just now, bro. Yeah. And I swear a light bulb clicked off in my head. And I was like, <laughs> wow, I never realized that there were so many limit orders getting placed. That makes so much sense. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I, I when I think about things, I'm, I'm very much logical. So like, um, and, and price action is really easy for me to see in, in Forex, just cause like, if you saw my trade tracker, it's what I trade the most. Um, 
I actually just got back into options because I've I have now a little bit more time from Forex so um, but yeah if, if you look at so supply and demand zones aren't the end-all be-all right because uh, institutions run things a little bit differently um, and so they manipulate price so another thing to look at is smart money concepts but you know if I see if I see something like this right it's been tapped a number of times I'm on the daily chart, so it, it came in this zone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. So I see that price is just getting eaten here, right? There's so many limit buy orders in here, but people are selling so much that the limit buy orders can't fix. And then what happens when price crosses? Those buy orders have to sell to cover their position. So now, you know, every, everybody remembers GameStop's short squeeze. It's the same concept, but reverse. If if I, you know, here, everything, people have their stops right in this level. And so once price hits that level, they're shorting. So now they have to buy to cover and price is just gonna, it's called a pivot machine gun. It's hitting these people stops, these people stops, these people stop. So when you think logically about what a supply and demand zone is, you need to know that you need to know why it's a supply and demand zone and you need to see that it's been hit multiple times to show that there's enough limit orders in there to stop price from going through it and if price goes through it um, for example you know on spy which is a, a daily trader for me when price goes through a supply and demand zone you want to see a retest immediately so I would have I would have had this as a supply and demand zone right but once price breaks through, I don't want to be the first one in or the first one out. I want to see at least a retest. So I can actually get this a little bit a little bit more confined. So now I see price broke through, but it retested immediately here. When it retests, it's seeing, okay, are there enough buyers that if price comes back here, it's going to push up. So it retested and said yes. So here's where I would be buying. Um, same kind of concept right here. We broke gotcha. through, retested, and then here I would never, I would never buy on this candle. Uh, this candle, I would never buy on these sets, because you don't know yet if that's just going to be a false breakout or if it's what's called a liquidity grab. I would buy on this candle right there, because it's already retesting, and the wick tells me. You know, when you think about what the, the story that a candle's telling you, it's that price and it's price started up here, right? It's a red candle, so price opened here. It tried to push down, tried to push down and fought, but ultimately the bears were able to push price up here. And then now here's the here's the level where you would probably want to go down. Got you, got you. So I, yeah. Okay, bet, bet, bet. If you looked at AMC right now, do you see any support zones? Today was just an interesting day. I can take a look. I, I didn't trade AMC at all myself. Um, generally, these get IV crushed, but they have been able... I've seen you know, a couple of analysts move them uh, and, and get good contracts. Um, first off, you never want to get your support and resistance off of your lower time frames. Yeah, so, when, so immediately when I'm looking, I see this zone right here. And and what happened here is what's called a liquidity grab. So the smart money is just stopping out all the people who were short. And then this wick down here is stopping out everybody who was long. And so now we're battling between these two support zones right here. I would say this is another one here. We're kind of right, right dead set in the middle there. Um, so, you know, if I were to call this out on the watch list, um, which I won't because it's AMC and doesn't move really with yeah. price action, but if I were, I would say under $26 is, is kind of uh, bearish and over, you know, you can start building into a position here. Um, one second, let me close my door. Uh, you can kind of start start a, tr uh, a position when it breaks over these wicks here, right? So pretty much that area, 30.28. Um, 
if you're going long, but if I pull up an AMC contract, the IV is uh, crazy, which is why I haven't touched it. Uh, it's 300%. So pretty much a regular move on an IV that's you know zero to 20, you need to have three times the move for the price to move the same. Um, so, so price is already on the calls, price is already factored in. So even if you do go above 32, I wouldn't expect, you know, a thousand percenter on a, on a lotto play just because of that IV crush. Any other questions here? I'm looking in uh, trading chat if anyone has anything. Oh, shit. I don't know what's going on. I'm on the road right now. My connection is off. Microsoft. What uh, contracts do you have there? And what expiration? Yeah, Microsoft's been on my watch list. I just didn't call out a swing yet because um, Spy hasn't really Spy's making its move, but not not really yet. Where well, today was a gap up, obviously. But oh, you're overnighting it. Okay, so three seventeen and a half. So um, my yellow lines are weekly lines. So it's already crossed the weekly high low. Um, and here, let me show you what what my uh, setup looks like when I'm looking for a swing. So I go monthly, weekly, daily, hourly. Um, and so when I'm looking here, I'm looking on the month. If you know what the strat is, we have a 212 reversal. So basically, we have a bearish here, but then we have an inside bar. And then we have uh, a green out or a green up bar, two bar. And so, on the month we are bullish. On the week, I'm looking. We have an inside bar. Okay, you know about the two one two. Got it. So on the week we have an inside bar, which generally is a uh, it's a buildup of liquidity essentially. On the daily. We have a 212 bearish reversal, but you know I would be more inclined to say that this candle is bullish, um, just based on you know again the psychology of of what this candle's telling me. It tells me that bears tried to push price down, could not claim below 213, and ultimately it finished over 223. Uh, and then uh, hourly, you know, obviously that's that's mainly for entries. So, oh wait, what am I doing? I am on crowd. When did that switch? Okay, crowd. We have an outside bar. <laughs> Sorry, Microsoft. We have an outside bar. Uh, heavy resistance here at three fifteen sixty area, uh, which is where we're at here on the weekly. And. Um, yeah, we had a pivot machine gun almost. Um, two one two bears continuation. Two two. Uh, or no, this is a three. So yeah, you should be. Uh, I would say you're cleared. The only issue I have with this is that this whole zone, right up top here, is super squeezy. But I've been looking, and uh, or not squeezy, but just a lot of resistance there. And also this zone up here, so you know I'd I wouldn't be too worried if I saw price come down to um, maybe even retest confirm when I bought the con oh you're down fourteen percent um, let's see the contract itself you said you're two seventeen and a half I believe. 317.5. Yeah, so those have pretty good volume, good open interest. Spreads a little wide, but not bad. Um, data. 
they're just not horrible. As you get closer to Friday, it's going to get worse. Um, you know, if I'm looking for a swing, I'm probably looking for the monthlies, which are the four April 14th. And I'd be looking at, you know, based on my price targets here, my next price target after it breaks this high area would be right there at 323. Um, so I, I don't think you're in, you know, s I'm thinking of selling that as soon as the market opens. Yeah, I mean, uh, that, that's completely up to you um, and, and your risk tolerance. And, and, you know, I don't know how heavy you're in or anything like that. If it were me with those contracts, I'd probably, you know, kind of see where we, where we open. The first 15 minutes of market and really the first 30 minutes, the reason you never see me alert a signal in those first 15 to 30 minutes is because the market hasn't really made up its mind. Like if I show you SPY today, and this you can go back and look at this yourself and you'll see the same thing. Price doesn't make up its mind until after this 15 minutes. So if you saw SPY and you played the first 15 minutes, you'd be seeing that, okay, we've definitely hit hit a downtrend. Okay, but what's this at, at 10.15, 10 o'clock? Oh, wait, that's a reversal. Same thing, reversal, and we ended up green. But if you traded the first 15 minutes, you, you wouldn't have had that thought. Um, so I, I'd be careful, you know, let's see what, what they at. Yeah, they're not bad. Um, I, I mean, I see a lot more upside personally to to Microsoft than I do downside. Um, the only only problem I have is that you um, have the weekly contracts and not the monthlies. If you had the monthlies, I'd say it's a no-brainer. You need to keep those until April 14th and let those puppies run. Because um, really, you know, an outside bar on the monthly tells me we're going to have a good amount. And then this is pretty much an entire candle of green, barely any wicks on the weekly. And so, you know, I just see that this thing is, is running. Um, and honestly, with a candle this big on a Tuesday, I'm expecting a red day probably tomorrow or Thursday on Microsoft um, before it ends green if it's going to end green. Um, one more ticker you said was Roblox. 5308 is a huge support resistance. If it breaks that, I feel like it'll go long. Bears look weak on the monthly too. Um, yeah, bears do look weak on the monthly. It's a high volume month. Um, 5308 is a huge support resistance. Uh, yeah, probably too big here. Yeah, so you're looking at the top of this right here on the daily a couple of days ago. Um, yeah, so if you're looking at Roblox, right, so we we see that it's possibly reversing. Really, I don't, if you're playing the strat, you, you want to have full time firm continuity. So I would really only be looking at, at puts here if I'm if I'm following the rules of that. But when I look at the weekly, that's a pretty clear reversal. The only thing I'm not looking at going long at all on Roblox until it breaks that 53 and retests, or if it breaks with volume. Um, this is in an interesting spot. It's been beaten down so long. If we look at other stocks that have been beaten down for a long time, then uh, then you can see the potential. Um, Roblox IPO'd last year had this massive run up inside bar and then reversal. So you would have, if you would have caught this reversal, you know, here at 93, you would have had a massive um, win on a, on the put side. For for looking for a long side, I'd really like to see. Um, you know, the month ends in one day or two days. I'd like to see this either um, close as a hammer or I'd like to see the month, first couple of days, start green before really going long for a swing. But this would be a couple month swing if you're looking at a couple week swing. Same thing, you want to see a break over 53 before going long. Um, and then your, your upside's up to, you know, probably a couple bumps in the road, but but ultimately your price target should be at about 74. Yeah, no problem, man.
No problem at all. Any other uh, stickers or anything you guys want to see? Seventy four when I so seventy four is when I take profit or give in. No, no. If you're uh yeah, I mean seventy four is a long way away, right? That's fifty plus fifty percent almost on the stock. Um if you're looking for a swing, you know, without looking at the contracts, so let me look up the contracts since we see that there is some good upside. I'd be looking at probably the May monthlies at the uh and they're about eighty percent IV. Um so not horrible. Um, so I'm looking at May monthlies, right? 65 con 65 calls. There's $1,500 or 1,500 shares of volume. Um, about a 26 delta. Uh, so yeah, when I if I get triggered on this, um, those are the contracts I'd look and and I would I would be holding them up to 65. Your entry right now would be at about 214 is when the last contract was traded. Um, and since I know my target is, you know, 74, if it can hit 74, those contracts would end up being $14 a piece from $2.14. Um, so lots of upside, obviously. But yeah, I definitely would not wait until 74 to get in. 74 is kind of like once it crosses here, we're back in into uh, a bullish trend on Roblox. But until then, I wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be looking at it. Um, Let's see. Last thing I'll do here. We'll do a little market look. So yeah, SPY is going to end the month on a uh, outside bar green day. Uh, not outside bar, two up is technically what it's called. Uh, green month, which is good. Um, we really didn't want to lose this 410 level. It actually didn't really get close at all. Today we broke the monthly high and uh, we gapped up over the weekly high and now we're in kind of uh, retracement territory. So I would be, uh, without looking super close, 466 is where I would be looking at next. Um, and then, uh, yeah, all the way up to all time highs if we are flipping the switch. but. Uh, price action obviously falls behind fundamentals. So, if something ends up happening in Ukraine or um, interest rates, we can expect a pullback as well. Uh, my candlesticks are different colors because of Strat Assistant. So, uh, it just colors them. Uh, I don't keep these on, but it colors the inside bar yellow, two up green, two down red, and a three bar purple. Um, that's it. So it's called Strat Assistant, and I believe, yep, it is by Rixie Carroll. Uh, so I have so I have these off because my Strat hashtag the Strat colors those for me, and then uh, all I have is just these two ticked off, and then everything else is on, but I don't I don't use this. Um, yep, and then this one is called hashtag the strat, and this is what I have. Yep, strat is OP. Um, I'm, I'm, it is what will, uh, it's, it's not, like I said, it's not the end all be all. You can use it with support and resistance, like this indicator that I'm hovering over. Um, and you can use it intraday as well with Bollinger Bands and stuff like that. Um, it's definitely not the end-all be-all, but I mean, I was looking, you know, for something that would keep, get, get my win rate even higher, you know, help me find out when, when things are done moving, when things are going to start moving. And uh, yeah, the Strat definitely does that. So yeah, uh, I'll end with that. The Strat is uh, by Rob Smith. People like Sarah Strat Sniper or Alex Options also teach it. Um, yeah, super, I'm super passionate about it. Would love to help anybody learn. But uh, yeah, if we don't have any other questions, I'll, uh, I'll end it with that. If you guys have anything you need, um, like I said, ping me. I don't know if I have DMs enabled. Um, I'm in so many servers that 
I get spam all day if I have DMs enabled, but uh, you can shoot me a friend request and I'll I'll double check your um, your name to make sure you're in here and active, and then uh, we can DM there, or you can ping me in your server as well. And uh, yeah, happy to help in any way I can, and uh, just want to share what I know. For sure, I appreciate you, bro. You opened yeah. my eyes up to a good quite a few different things today. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. If you guys, uh, if you guys need anything, ping me. All right, don't, uh, don't be afraid. Gotcha. Right. Well, you have a good day, big dog. Yeah, yeah. Everybody have a good one.